I remember uh, back in Thurles, I went to visit a friend of mine who owned a shop. It was a, uh, a men's clothing, a shop for men's clothing. And uh, it was just, you know, the facade of the shop is absolutely beautiful. Like it's what it was called, men's best, and it's illuminated, and it's all colour, and it's all kind of, you know, the, the double glazed, uh, nice front on it, and you've got the models of um, mannequin. What's a male mannequin? Is that still a mannequin? Dummies wearing clothes, and, uh, and you go to the shop, and everything is ordered, and everything is clean, and everything is symmetrical, and everything is, you know, it's all kind of sorted. Uh, but my job was to, I had to do a job in the back, you know what I mean? And what I noticed was, as soon as you opened the door from like the shop part and went into like the store in the back, then you were into like, you know, old Thurlis of the, the 17th century, like where, you know, it's all kind of wobbly walls and it's all made out of stone and it's all kind of whitewashed and it's all kind of mank and then it's a bit of sewage running down there, you know. And it's just, you know, it's, it's like backstage, mank, then you're back into kind of, you know. And I noticed in, in different shops, any, any jobs I did, I used to fit windows uh, over the summers. And like it was, I noticed that in, in quite a lot of shops, generally not places that would sell food. Uh, but but like the, the facade is always beautiful, the shop itself is always beautiful, but then what's backstage can be kind of mank. Uh, with architecture, architecture is about showing, so, uh, architecture communicates something, it says something, right? Uh, when I went to New York the first time, I was very surprised about one thing really, how ordinary New York was, ordinary. The vast majority of it, like the Bronx and Queens and all these other places were just ordinary places, like four or five story buildings, just looked very, very normal. Whereas I thought, New York was Manhattan Island. That's what we see. When we hear New York, you hear the New York skyline, right? And you think New York, you think aliens invading because it seems no matter where aliens come from, they always land in not Manhattan Island, right? Spider-Man, right? Like, you need skyscrapers. Like, I mean, but they are only on Manhattan Island. You go into the rest of New York, there are no skyscrapers. But they're a facade. They're there to show, you know, banks and power and... and uh, World Trade Centers and all this kind of thing. You go to La Défense in, in, in France, there, in Paris there, same kind of thing, really impressive buildings because buildings are, are there to, to communicate something, not just functionality, okay? And churches similarly. Churches are, they're, they're built to show that we believe God is powerful. Uh, very, lots of different things about architecture uh, speak to us about what we think God is. Gothic, Gothic churches, for example, are very narrow and everything goes up to a point, all right? Um, Holy Cross Abbey, if you're from Turles and down around that area. Um, the kind of narrow, tall, thin, everything is kind of spiky. And it's, so, so when you go in, when you go into a, a Gothic church, your, your gaze is kind of lifted, right? You, it's raised, you have a tall cross way over the altar. So when you go in, it reminds you of the kind of, the greatness of God, and everything should be kind of pointing up, you know? Um, or like Baroque churches where it's just everything is, puffy and clouds and cherubs and, you know, just like the beauty of heaven. Um, typical Irish churches are built in a cruciform, so in the shape of a cross, and you also have a side altar to the Sacred Heart, maybe a side, a side altar to the Immaculate Heart. So, like, all of these things communicate something about, about what we believe. Today's the feast of the, the dedication of the Lateran Basilica, and you might be asking yourself, why should I really care about the Lateran Basilica? Where is the Lateran Basilica? The Lateran Basilica is the Cathedral of Rome, so it's, it's like the mother church of of all Catholic churches. So it's, it's important to us because uh, like, like in a wedding or a funeral, when one part of the church celebrates, the whole church celebrates. So when the church in Rome celebrates, we all celebrate. Why? Because we are Roman Catholic. So we celebrate together. We celebrate these things together. Even if you've never been there, we celebrate together. And we remember two things. Uh, one, like the, yeah, the importance of, of churches and that churches look beautiful. You know, stained glass windows are something so typical for Ireland, like so beautiful. You don't find stained glass window like we have uh, abroad. Well, at least not, 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 it's, it's very rare to have such beautiful stained glass windows as we have in Ireland. Um, obviously, in Italy, they have tons of marble, so they have marble everywhere. Everything is, is marble, and it's just beautiful. We have to get it all imported the whole way from Italy, and they did back in the day for centuries, uh, imported into Ireland for the massive columns that you'll see in different cathedrals or... Uh, the rare dosses that you see around the country, all imported because we believe that God deserves the best. So that's one aspect, you know, our architecture and buildings and, and how, how it's important for us 
It's important, it's actually important for us to give God the best. It's important for us that like our churches are places of, of, of beauty, places of prayer, places that very clearly indicate the center. You know what I mean? That, that everything points towards the tabernacle. Everything points towards Jesus. That's, that's the way a church should be. But there's something deeper than that as well. That uh, as we hear in our reading, our second reading there, you are God's building. So whatever about cathedrals and, and churches, important and all as they are, the most important dwelling place for God is you. Is you. Because no matter what happens here uh, as regards our celebration of the Mass, uh, people... So, two things. When we celebrate Mass, the grace of, of that Mass changes the world. It, the, the grace of that Mass is not contained by the walls of, the, of this chapel, right? So the grace it spreads out over the whole world. But yeah, why don't people change? If, if Mass is being celebrated all the time, why don't people change? Often we can be like stones in a river, right? A stone can be there in a river for who knows how long, centuries possibly, right? You take it out, you get a big hammer, you clock it, break open, bone dry inside. Surrounded by water for maybe three, four hundred years, maybe, maybe centuries, maybe, sorry, maybe millennia, and yet not a single drop has gotten in. So while we might be kind of surrounded by grace through the presence of like even one host on the earth, in order for that grace to get in, I think we need to see the gospel lived. I think we need to see the gospel in people. I think we need to hear the gospel preached. That's why the Lord gives us that, that great commission, go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations. He's sending us out. His grace is sufficient. Of course it is. But unless people see the gospel lived, unless they see it put into practice, unless they see it, unless they hear it preached, it, it's, they're just ideas or they can be surrounded by grace, but none of it gets in. Why should I open my heart to, to this? What, why should this? Uh, the, the very objective question, why should I? Why should I open my heart to this grace? I mean, I don't even know who this God is. So, no thanks. I'll just keep my heart to myself there. That's all right. So un unless someone like, shows us, well, see, our faith, it's, it's loving, it's merciful. It wants your ultimate good. It wants heaven for you. And God is our Father who, who loves us and guides us and provides for our needs. Unless, unless it, it's lived in, then maybe I can start to open that heart. Then all this grace that surrounds us, even from one holy mass, can flow in. But that's why it's so important that we recognize we are God's building, God's church, far more important than any basilica. We represent him. We make, him pres we make his grace visible. We, we make it incarnate. Our faith is, is an incarnational faith. God's grace is there, absolutely, and it can absolutely change hearts and change lives. But and it can do so in miraculous ways, but for most of us, it's done through seeing the faith lived, this incarnational faith, God's grace lived out in a person. That's what's inspirational and inspiring. That's why we need the saints. That's why John Paul II, Saint John Paul II, felt it so important to, to canonize many saints, give us examples, lived examples of the gospel. And so we ask today for the good Lord now to renew our lives, our hearts, and our missionary call. That we might be conduits, that we might be canals, canals through which God's grace can flow into the hearts of a parched world. Amen. <laughs>